Now, for our first speaker for the evening, uh, he's a man that describes himself as a part-time musician and a full-time magician. He is the caretaker, self, uh, self-proclaimed caretaker, of Connolly's of Lep, and he's here tonight to discuss the running of a small-town cult music venue. Ladies and gentlemen, from Connolly's of Lep, Sam McNichols. <laughs> Hi everyone, how are you doing? Hello. Okay, so I'm Sam McNichol. Um, I think within my friend group, I'm. Uh, it's 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 commonly known that I love the sound of my own voice. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it'll uh, come to as a surprise that I'm very I'm very nervous to be up here and in writing the speech is is quite nerve-wracking as well. So I'm going to just crack on and uh, tell you a little bit about my life and what I do. And it starts as a few chapters and it starts in 1950 with my grandparents Mick and Sarah. They bought uh, the Central Bar in Lep in 1950, after they got married, they had six kids. Uh, Mick was a singer, a Shano singer, so there was always a lot of music in the house. There was a lot of partying. Uh, a full house all the time. They ran a B&B. It was a bit like a zoo. They had six kids, as I said. One of them was my mom, Eileen, who moved to Dublin in the mid-'80s, met my dad here, and they fell in love. He was like... He was a silver tongue northerner, a bit of a, a hippie, a music man. He was into music. He, he had played with bands for years and ran festivals, ran venues. This is him in the venue, sitting in front of the hammers here. Yeah, that's me <laughs> trying to look like my dad a little bit. This is actually a, a picture I had of my grandparents painted on their wedding day upstairs in the venue. So basically, I'm trying to like continue what what my dad did. He they ran a cult venue in the in the, in rural West Cork for about 25 years, and this is kind of like why why the artist actually came. How how did it happen? How did we how did how did Conley's become to be what it is? I think the first is because of tradition. I mean, his his dad played violin. It was always music was always very important in our house and very very important to us as a family. I think respect because. The artists were always given, like reg- regardless of age or, or ability, I mean, 17-year-olds were given the same respect as like his idols that came through the venue, like Garth Hudson from the band or John Martin. I think everyone, everyone was treated the same, whether you were young or old or it was your first time playing or you know, you'd been around the block and you'd played for years, everyone was kind of treated the same, as well like the gear, like the musical equipment put in the house. I mean, to quote my mom, she said, we didn't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of, but it was always like new guitars, drums, you know, the best, the best shit. And recording, I mean, a lot of bands would say that the first time that they properly heard themselves back was in leaving the venue. They'd leave with like a little cassette or whatever ADAT or whatever medium that was using at the time. And they would just, yeah, I think that's why the bands came. And as well, the audience, I mean, the artist's dad created like a space that artists wanted to come to, and therefore the audience followed them. So it was always, I, I think that was the most important thing, that the audience followed the artist because they wanted to be there because he was a musician, he knew what had been lacking in venues. So he just created a space that they wanted to be in. What's not cool? <laughs> There's a, I mean, for everyone that works in music and in culture, there's like, there's a ton of like work at the back end that no one ever sees. Everyone sees the like, the night or the event or the cool stuff or like, you know, for instance, the amount of work that's gone into this, and to everyone else. I mean, the taxes like just the, I mean, working nights, last to bed, first up, the paperwork, the crazy amount of office time, time spent on computers. You know, people don't see that. They just see like, the fun. I mean, I still clean the toilets, I, <laughs> I make the beds, I make the food, I put the bands up. It's a lot of work. But what is cool is the magic. <laughs> the sweet spot. 
So it's 10 p.m. and the candles are lit and the audience are there and they have the drinks in their hand and they're sitting and they're waiting and the lights are down and it's moody and the band are at the side of the stage and they're going through the set in their head and it's like there's something is going to happen you know and like we've all we, that's why we go out we go out to culture we go out to see artists we go out to see people that put themselves on a stage to go out there we want something from them that's that's why i do what i do because it's it's just something you can't explain and like the best nights that we've all ever had are out watching bands watching perform big bands small venue so I mean, we've had some nice acts through this year. It's it's gone a lot better than I thought it would, <laughs> which is kind of fun. Um, we've had some nice. We've had some nice. We had Mick Flannery this weekend. Gone was really nice. Uh, lots of bands that I admire. I mean, my brother had his and his girlfriend or his now wife. They had their first dance to. Uh, a James Vincent McMorrow tune, and then he ended up playing at the venue, and they were just, that was like a big moment for us, where it was just like, they were there watching their wedding song, and he was on stage in their house, and they were just like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, culture is for everyone. I mean, it's, it's quite common. People come through the venue, and they're like, it's such a diverse audience. It's it's really it's kind of trippy. I mean, we we regularly have like three generations from the same family there, like from eighteen all the way up to like late sixties, and it, that's a bit of a trip, you know. And it's like we have the quiet nights where you can hear a pin drop and everyone is sitting and watching and in silence, and that's really beautiful. And then we have the nights where it's absolutely mental, and you just stop people from climbing up the walls and taking their clothes off. <laughs> um, this for me is a little bit of an analogy of what culture is. I kind of think it's ironic that I'm up here like talking about culture and how we make it or how we create a platform for it to be made. Because I think culture is a little bit like love. Bear with me. <laughs> and it's kind of like if you're, you know, if, if you want love or if you if you have love, you have to you have to leave it. You have to watch it. You can't you can't own it. You can't can't hold it, you can't talk about it, you just have to let it, let it be, you just gotta keep leaving it alone, maybe. <laughs> and this for me is, this is who we are, this is Ireland, we are the incubator, the artistic incubators of the world, we've given the world the great artists, I think, I mean, Oscar Wilde said, we gave you you, get, we, you gave us your language, we gave you your literature, and I really, really love it. We're the only country in the world that its symbol is an instrument. I think that that's very profound, and that's who we are, and it's definitely who I am. For me, <laughs> if I want you to take anything from what I'm gonna say, it's that it's not easy trying to choose being creative or cultural as your career path to make money from it. It's a big risk in that. And I think we need to take risks on those people that choose that as like the, the goers or the, we have the power to empower them and that's really important. And I think we need to keep spreading that. It's a big deal to get up on stage and to try and make a living from it. So we need to take risks on the risk takers. <laughs> this is my mantra. This is written on my office wall. Um, I read it every day. And I'm definitely not afraid to get it right this time. <laughs> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Sam McNichol.